Book Twenty of the Analects of Confucius, translated by William Jennings. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Extracts from the Book of History. The Emperor Yao said to Shun, "Ah, upon you, upon your person, lies the heaven-appointed order of succession." faithfully hold to it without any deflection for if within the four seas necessity and want befall the people your own revenue will forever come to an end shun also used the same language in handing down the appointment to yu the emperor tang in his prayer said i the child lu presume to avail me of an ox of dusky hue and presume to manifestly announce to thee o god the most high and sovereign potentate that to the transgressor i dare not grant forgiveness nor yet keep in abeyance thy ministers judgment rests in thine heart o god should we ourselves transgress may the guilt not be visited everywhere upon all should the people all transgress be the guilt upon ourselves Zhou possessed great gifts, by which the able and good were richly endowed. Although, said King Wu, he is surrounded by his near relatives, they are not to be compared with men of humane spirit. The people are suffering wrongs, and the remedy rests with me, the one man. After Wu had given diligent attention to the various weights and measures, examined the laws and regulations, and restored the degraded officials, good government everywhere ensued. He caused ruined states to flourish again, reinstated intercepted heirs, and promoted to office men who had gone into retirement, and the hearts of the people throughout the empire drew towards him. Among matters of prime consideration with him were these, food for the people, the duty of mourning, and sacrificial offerings to the departed. He was liberal and large-hearted, and so won all hearts true and so was trusted by the people energetic and thus became a man of great achievements just in his rule and all were well content zi zhang in a conversation with confucius asked what say you is essential for the proper conduct of government the master replied let the ruler hold in high estimation the five excellences and is true the four evils then may he conduct his government properly and what call you the five excellences he was asked they are he said bounty without extravagance burdening without exciting discontent desire without covetousness dignity without haughtiness show of majesty without fierceness what mean you asked zi zhang by bounty without extravagance is it not this he replied to make that which is of benefit to the people still more beneficial when he selects for them such labors as it is possible for them to do and exacts them who will then complain so when his desire is the virtue of humanness and he attains it how shall he then be covetous and if whether he have to do with few or with many with small or with great he do not venture ever to be careless is not this also to have dignity without haughtiness and if when properly vested in robe and cap and showing dignity in his every look his appearance be so imposing that the people look up to and stand in awe of him is not this moreover to show majesty without fierceness what then do you call the four evils said zi zhang the answer here was omitting to instruct the people and then inflicting capital punishment on them which means cruel tyranny omitting to give them warning and yet looking for perfection in them which means oppression being slow and late in issuing requisitions and exacting strict punctuality in the returns which means robbery and likewise in intercourse with men to expand and to receive in a stingy manner which is to act the part of a mere commissioner none can be a superior man said the master who does not recognize the decrees of heaven none can have stability in him without a knowledge of the proprieties none can know a man without knowing his utterances end of book twenty recording by li jing end of the analects of confucius translated by william jennings